Radio. Welcome in, everybody. It's a new week of Smite Competitive Play, and as always, we're going to be kicking it off with the Console League. Agro joined here by Taco, and Taco, as always, we'll start off today with the European Console League on the Xbox side of things. Should be a pretty exciting last couple of weeks here, gearing up into the final uh, day, actually, of the consoles, and everybody That's trying right. to get their way up in the standings. They, remember, this is not the final week of console action, even though it's the final week of SPL. There will be still one more week as we have to make up a week because of Labor Day earlier on this split. But we don't have to make up anything about DreamHack because you should be there. Uh, really easy. It's November 16th through the 18th. HighRiseExpo.com is the place to go to get your tickets. Also have the after party afterwards. If you're going to HRX and DreamHack, you'd be an absolute buffoon to not get your after party ticket as well. And just a great opportunity to get a chance to say hey to all the players and meet some other friends and uh, maybe make some new friends. That's right. If, you wanna, if you're a fan of these console league teams and they can make it to the HRX and DreamHack Atlanta, is a great place to say hello. So make sure you get your tickets as soon as possible. And the teams that are trying to get there include what we've got up today, Noxious Vert up against Cyclone GG. Obviously, these teams kind of looking up a team rival right now. A rival definitely taking the head of the standing so far in Europe, at least. But it doesn't mean that there aren't any other teams that can't give them a run for their money. I think we've been seeing a steady increase in the level of competition throughout European console smite. And rival ends up 2 0 retribution during the offline games. Astral Authority also finds a 2-0 victory on the North American side over Elevate. We will have Flashpoint versus Armada later on today. That'll be a really, really good game as we take a look at the standings. As we mentioned, Rival up on top in Europe. We've been saying that for years at this point. They are guaranteed to be your first seed in Europe. And it looks like Astral Authority also guaranteed in North America. And Astral Authority probably feeling incredibly happy right now. Same thing for Rival. Undefeated so far for both of these teams. And that says a lot. It does. And Flashpoint and Armada, two and two apiece. Those two teams really vying for that top two spot. Same can be said for Cyclone and Noxious. Like we said, this isn't the final week, so those two teams do have an opportunity to switch it up. It looks like Cyclone's in second right now, but Noxious does have a win so far in the column, and we'll see if they can find a second one up against Cyclone. As these teams re really just trying to look at improving as much as they can as they come down to the final weeks. And understandably so. I, I think that Cyclone, they can't ever get too comfortable. They might be in second place for now, but Noxious always has that opportunity to play spoiler. That's right. Let's get right into it. Picks and bans ready for Noxious up against Cyclone GG. Noxious will have that first pick slot. And we've seen the, the console league meta kind of develop throughout this split. I know it's not the last week, but it's the second to last week. And so these picks are not set in stone, of course, but the comfort picks, I think, have been established for certain players. And, and that's where the picks and bans could kind of change from week to week. It does feel a little bit more like console players tend to heavily focus out either one member of an enemy team or just look for very specific comfort picks. Yes. I, I think that it's fair to say, though, that Aphrodite is definitely underneath that uh, general spectrum. There you go. That's just what we were talking about. As you mentioned, I think that the console league teams do seem a lot more willing to target ban people instead of just go with the meta bans. Bakasura, I think, fits that role as well with Cyclone adding in. This does leave open Chernabog, and that'll be the first pick. Baron still open. A Pele still open. So uh, Cyclone could end up with two really strong picks here. Terra not thought of as the premier guardian right now, but certainly a good one. She's been very heavily prioritized lately over in the console side of things. I, I think that the root play is just very pivotal for a lot of these teams to Be get sure to yep. that easy root. setup going. I think Cirquette is well going to add in even more crowd control factors here, but leaving open the Baron for Noxious to take on top Man. of the Chernabog, bit of a risky move here from Cyclone. That is uh, already Baron and Chernabog on the same team is scary. This RDO pick is great especially against what Cyclone have so far. That's two gods that really get shut down heavily by Cripple. Ardeo kind of the premier Cripple character right now. Noxious draft looking great already. And Cyclone opt to go for their Hunter. They wanted as fair of a matchup as they could take, or at least the more comfortable matchup for their Hunter going into the Chernabog. Oh, it's not for certain just yet, though, what this is Chernabog for the Hunter role. It could be flexed True. into the mid lane. Baron could end up 
in that solo role or even yep. the support role with the way that things have been looking lately. RDO can do solo or support as well. I do think if you're putting Baron solo, then having Chernabog mid to give you some extra physical damage isn't a bad idea. But Noctra's draft wide open at this point. Is Sun Wukong going to be the next selection for Cyclone? Lots of mid laners off the board, though. Now Raijin, Isis, and Discordia all hit a ban in that second phase. Noxia is clearly concerned about Cyclone having a, a desirable mid lane pick here. Yeah. And they're going to buckle down with this damage factors that they've been leading towards with that Achilles. I like the Jingwei acquisition as okay. well. It does solidify the thought process that Chernabog is going to be in the mid lane and Jingwei yep. for the dual lane role. But I am curious to see as to whether it ends up being that Ardeo or the Baron in the support. I think either one could be pretty good here. They both bring good push, but They've got to try and shut down this hell either way. The mid lane selection here for Cyclone. They they ban away the Aphrodite, but they leave open another healer, and that's where Cyclone go immediately. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out exactly for Noxious, because they have so much damage, but not necessarily the easiest ways to apply any anti-heal. Hunters can kind yeah. of struggle, unlike mages who are able to pick up the Divine Ruin. Turnabog and Jingwei both respectively can struggle a little bit as well with the Brawler's Beat Stick. Not a lot of their abilities really able to proc that super efficiently. Agreed. I think maybe you put Baron in solo with this so that he can build Divine Ruin and not be super far behind as a support player, though building Divine even in solo feels pretty bad, I think, for a mage player. You're basically looking at Achilles to build the Brawlers. I mean, that's that's basically all the anti-heal you could possibly have as we get ready to go in the game. We don't need to wait any longer and see where Baron's going to end up going. It'll be in the solo lane for Gnome. I think, the, I think this looks a little bit better to me. Uh, Aurora has really brought me around on RDO support. He's been playing it nonstop in the North American SPL and has found great success. It's just the pressure that an RDO support can bring. Having the double abilities, it's kind of like what early Uller was uh, first as. I, I think that RDO just able to clear the wave so easily a as well. Just You can't really afford to pressure her out because if you prioritize poking the RDO, then you're going to wind up forgetting to clear out the creep waves, and then you possibly get your buffs invaded. Take a look at these interesting starts for both hunters. Hydro rushes the Ninja Tabai. That gives him no potions whatsoever. Just gives him that extra movement speed and attack speed early on. Anticipate he's going to use that to back with Jingwei uh. passive. But then Lake in the mid lane is rushing the Cursed Gauntlet. What, what do you think about both of these? Uh, for the Chernabog and Jingwei, it makes a little bit more sense on the Jingwei just because she has that passive where she'll be able to fly back to the lane and not really skip a beat when it comes to farm. And I, I think that this is probably a really good example of that so far. I love the way that Hydro and Zwen hug the wall inside the purple buff so they don't miss out on those final three archers. But for Lake in the mid lane to rush the Devo Gloves is a rather risky start. You only get one pot each this way. And not only that, but it'll be a lot easier, I think, for Neil to actually try and punish this Cherno without the mobility. Maybe he's really worried about the Hell Poke, but that doesn't seem particularly warranted to me. Transcendence is so good on Chernabog because his one combo hits like a truck with the amount of scaling that it provides. What, 80% on both sides, so 160% scaling if you can detonate that crystallized curses. Mango looking to put some damage into Neil in that mid lane. But it just feels like th this Curse Gauntlet rush, I don't know, it, it seems a little bit soft. If you're going Curse Gauntlets, I get it. But you can you can start with the Hunter's Blessing at least, and that gives you that extra MP5 and transitions you better in the mid game. The main difference as well between going for the Devos here as opposed to a Transcendence is the fact that Lake is in the mid lane with this Chernabog, and you want the mana sustain that a Transcendence can provide, which is why you'll normally see Hunters opting for that route whenever they're ending up in the mid lane. Now that he has the Devos, these Chernabog mana sustain issues that he already suffered with it is going to become even more problematic. And on top of that, even when he hits level 5 for that Living Nightmare, it's not a get back to lane free wet card, same as Hydro. He has to actually commit to ulting towards somebody's shadow with the Living Nightmare. And right. that is risky enough as is. It's a good point. I don't know the last time I played Chernabog without Transcendence. And you're right, without it, I think there is some serious mana sustain problems with him. But it, it does end up being not that bad a lot of the time just because you can use your passive to give you some extra bit of mana or without not clear the way without using as much mana is what I was trying to say. Davy and Switch having control of this lane so far. Hydro has yet to back with this Ninja Tabai, so he's not getting a whole lot of sustain right here between mana or health. 
Hydra just looking to be as fast as possible in clearing these lanes out with Zuen, but surprisingly enough, they're the two getting poked out the most. Uh, Rom doesn't even necessarily have that much kill potential early game, but Davy wow. and Cyclo switch being so healthy. I wish they, they would have committed a little yeah. bit harder there onto invading that purple buff. Yeah, I don't know why they, they give that up. I mean, they know Hydro has no pots. If they, if they check the inventory and they know their map, 1,500 gold is what you start with, and Ninja Tabai costs, you guessed it, 1,500 gold. So if he's half health, half mana, he's not getting any healthier during the course of that fight. Zwen's dash was down. He used it to get close to them, and there was a full wave underneath the tower. Even if they just kind of posture right in front of the duo lane for Noxious, then they can't get to that wave. I just realized, too, Hydra, the reason why Noxious even started on their red buff to begin with is because Hydra sat in base waiting so he could fully buy the Ninja Tabai at the start of this match. And and that could be a little bit odd, but hold that thought. Neil uh -oh. actually trying to come in off the Mango now. Mango, no dash available right quite, but still able to get out of danger. Beads were good to prevent the toss back coming from the circuit. AirVX just good. does not have that damage quite yet on the hell to follow up, but once the burst damage is applicable there, that's when Manga needs to be a little bit more careful about his pathing inside the mid lane, because one last breath could just lead into some serious burst damage from the hell. Swen, first hit level five, and the aggression is on coming from Noxious on this left-hand side, but Switch just able to get in underneath that tier one tower. He stays up and healthy enough. But probably will have to go back to base, though it should be about time for him to head back anyways. Cost him his shell to stay up and alive. Hydra's just trying to be as efficient as possible with this red buff too, it feels, because the fact that Lake is allowing the Jingwei to take the red buff instead does strike me a little bit odd here. Chernabog probably has the better poke potential, especially against the Hell, and you want to try and suppress the Hell early on to begin with, so it, it does feel a, a little bit like the priorities from Noxious are not all in the right place just yet, but I, I do feel like this is a team that is very quickly able to adapt to different situations, and once they feel like your BX is starting to become more of a problem, that's when they might begin to address ganking this Hell a little bit more. Anytime you look at the net worth charts and Hell is at the top or near the top, it's scary for the opposition. And Arriviax has been under no pressure whatsoever so far this game. If you're picking the Achilles, it, you gotta you gotta play up early, right? I mean, sure, Neil is playing Sirket, who's also good in the early game, but I think that letting Arriviax go even this long without any sort of pressure is not a good look. I just don't think that Mango feels comfortable trying to apply any pressure against VX, knowing that his mid laner opted for such a passive start and Nomo ever could be in a lot of trouble, but he'll be saved from that juicy proc kill. Consigned Spirits is a good ability. Did you know that? That's uh, it, it, maybe it's just an opinion of mine, but I think it might I think it might be good. Looking, I don't know. looking pretty pretty good right there. I'd have to look it up. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, the the change well, hold on. Aribiax in the mid lane, now under some siege, getting low, and there he goes. First blood over to Mango, but Neil trying to answer back. Blink forward, Cobra's kiss off the mark, and now he needs to ambush away. Noxious able to get down that hell, which is exactly what they needed to do. I can't help but feel like so much of that damage came from Zwen alone, and I love that little wraparound technique. Air BX starting to feel too comfortable with this uh, lack of pressure, just kind of assuming that only Mango and Lake were actually there in the mid lane to try and aggress onto him. Lack of defensive wards from Cyclone. They've got the offensive wards locked down on the entrances to Noxious' side of the mid lane, but nothing on their side of the map. Aribiax did hold on to the purification beads, used his cleanse instead, so at least we'll stay somewhat safe moving forward as he finally finishes off that mage blessing, giving him a little bit more CDR. And I think that's really the main reason we see the mages this time around. It's A lot of mid laners have gone away from mage's blessing. Aribiax gets it, in my mind, just for the 10% CDR alone. Going back though to that little bit of action that was taking place in solo lane with Gnome and Chronic, a Chronic the Bros clearly getting the better end of Gnome here in this Baron Sun Wukong matchup. And I feel like that's also partially due to the fact that Chronic opted for this Mage's Blessing Wukong, just going very aggressive here, trying to look to punish Gnome early on. I like it, and it looks like he's going for a Pestilence right after the fact. That'll shut down some of that insane healing that we just saw coming from Consigned Spirits in that solo lane. Chronic can really just rely on his base damage, doesn't really need 
to build a whole lot of damage right away. Do you prefer the Pestilence here or something like the Runic Shield that we, we see a lot of times? Runic Shield would be a more aggressive option, and it would probably limit the poke potential out of Gnome, but I feel like the Pestilence is what's going to actually yield a kill for Chronic the Bros, because that Coastline Spirit has just healed so much. There wasn't a whole lot you could do, and now the same could be said for Hydros. He's trying to get away. Davey going to go up into that Astral Barrage, but a little bit of assistance here from Airstrike's going to keep Hydro safe in the air. Hydro using it just to take himself out of combat. Davey lands back down in the worst spot, but is still able to stay alive. Kuya just not quite enough damage to help out Hydro. A little bit too preemptive with that strike off the Crystallized Curse's Vicious Barrage. Had he held that until the ROM actually lands. Neil, though, not waiting around for Hydro in the slightest. Ambush over the wall, not going to connect because of the quick turnaround from Hydro. Good jukes from Hydro. Predictive movement. Such a big part of Smite and Hydro able to wiggle his way out of what looks like a certain death. I'm surprised that Neil even opted to stick around for so long, but the commitment of the blink and everything expended to try and lock down this Jingwei just goes to show how tricky she can actually be to successfully gank. She just has so many disengage tools in her kit between airstrike, agility, even the persistent gust can cause enemies to be knocked up and just prevent them from committing. I do like Neil heading over to that left side though. I mean, the, the solo lane, Noam has been under tower basically all game, so it'll be difficult to kill him consistently. Uh, Hydro didn't have beads, he went with Aegis at level 1, so that means that he's a little bit more susceptible to that Circat damage. Even though it doesn't net them a kill, I do think that Neil being over on that left side of the map is a pretty good idea. And now that Gnome is actually pushing out, we can see it again. Neil, though, without the blinks, going to have to be a little bit more careful about how he chooses to approach Gnome. But Baron is fairly immobile. Chronic the Bros is going to be off the mark with that Tiger Stun transformation. And it doesn't make much of a difference. Gnome still uses that life of the party, but only for the stun temporarily. Not really interested in actually trying to 1v2 here. That's a win. That's a win without a doubt for Cyclone and GG. Life of the party is so good. Gold Fury started, though, by Noxious because they saw Neil on that right-hand side. Davey, the only one local, has those piercing auto attacks. And Cyclone get it because Davey puts the arrows through Noxious. Cyclone steal away the Gold Fury, and now they're looking for Hydro who might just have a little bit too much mobility and ends up getting away. Pressure now onto Zwen. Great stun coming from Switch. Rooted, and the shots from the sky are good, but not quite good enough. Zwen is out. Unbelievable. How did he get out of there? The burst heal from the RDO, and now Arabix is actually the one in trouble, sitting in that execution range, but Mango just a little bit too poked out to want to try and get off the Fatal Strike. Both teams feeling like they lost something here. Gold Fury going down for Cyclone instead of Noxious definitely hurts. But then the fact that Zwen and Hydro and everybody else from Noxious kind of get away with it at that point probably has Cyclone a little frustrated. It was the right call. Just like this one might be the right call here for Cyclone. Still looking to commit to Hydro even further. Neil, though, Deathbane going to be off the mark here. So Hydro right safe and sound underneath the T1 tower. Mango forced off his own speed by Chronic the Bros, but Chronic does not commit to that speed buff. Too low on mana, and with the ultimate down, he decides to give up the chase. Did force Mango off, at least momentarily. Big play by Davey there, Taco. I mean, to steal that away is unlikely, but Cyclone Noxious can't just assume that body blocking Aram is going to get the job done. The Astro Arrows were all that... Davy really had to utilize, and it came down to timing in the end. Davy understanding that Noxious with this double hunter composition, they don't exactly have the first damage to bring down an objective all at once. So every single objective is contestable for Cyclone within reason, of course. But Arabiax, and now that it, this hell is starting to climb further and further up in levels, only pressured out one time, still has a level lead over Lake. It's a good point. Without a mage, you don't really have that guaranteed confirm on the objectives. Mango's got to use the B because of a great double stun coming from Switch, but Zwen not deterred, looking forward towards a Ribby Axe. Lake tries to step up, but can't quite get too close. And a good death bane this time from Neil will force the Earth and Fury coming from Switch because Hydro has shown up. Davey joins the party, but maybe didn't want to join because now he has to use the ultimate defensively. Everyone from Noxious 
getting low, but they're all still alive. Davey might be the first one out. Davey still trying to look for an escape route, but Hydra's going to be able to make quick work of him. Ambush over the wall, but Neil's off the mark. Poison might just do it. And Hydra's still just trying to buy, team for the re buy time for the rest of Noxious to disengage. And it will be successful in doing so. So it's a clean trade out of these hunters. Hydro for Davey. But Cyclone probably should have wound up with a couple more kills there, Agro. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, Cyclone has got to feel like it's getting frustrating for them now because they've had so many kills get away with them with red health bars so far in this one. They just need that little bit of extra damage to get the job done. But Neil's not going extra damage. It looks like he's going for a defensive option, Magi's potentially for him, or a Spirit Robe maybe. He's got Cloak 1. Currently, I mean, a Ribiax should probably be going more damage after this. Davy only having 13 Devo Glove stacks is a pretty big deal. That That is a severe lack of damage. Davy just has been prioritizing rotating a little bit too much. So, saw just how much damage his autos could start to do and then got a little bit distracted by some of these team fights or the faded team fights, I should say, because Noxious have not really ever tried to commit one way or the other. That was Cyclone taking the initiative to try and collapse onto Mango and Zwen after realizing that Mango burned out the purification beads. Cyclone basically even right now with Noxious. Again, these two teams second and third in the standings. Davey might be first to fall in this duo lane early on here, He's using his ultimate just to buy him a moment. Aegis is well there, but Airstrike confirms it for Hydro, that's number three for Noxious, and Neil can only sit and watch. Not only that, the airstrike is the main reason why Neil has to just back away there. Even if he'd wanted to try and come in after the fact, Hydro just a little bit too safe, surrounded by Zwen uh, to really justify Neil, in a sense, sacrificing his life for a possible pick. This build for Lake is taking another sort of strange turn. A lot of times you see the Devo Gloves, that means you're going for the traditional ADC build and the Executioner and things of that nature. Seeing a Heavy Mace on Chernobog isn't strange. We see it fairly often because of the Transcendence build and you want that extra pen that doesn't come from autos. Neil in trouble. One more auto would have done it for Mango, but Lake tries to get it done. Living Nightmare not in range. He's got a Beads and that gets him out of a lot of danger there. Root, Slow, and Stun all immune by those Purification Beads. And the rest of Noxious here now, but it looks like Cyclone a little bit too far away. I, I think Lake just second-guessed himself because he saw that he was going to be bolting straight into the T1 tower. He could have thrown out a Crystallized Curse and still found the kill, but now the rest of Noxious hoping to punish Cyclone GG for rotating. Four members strong of Cyclone, however, instead of Noxious 3. And this could be trouble for Noxious. They need to start disengaging. Gold Fury's up, and... Cyclone has the positional advantage. Remember, they also have the sustain advantage quite heavily because of the Hell and the Terra. So maybe they could try and pull gold, but Mango's got a good angle to come into this fight. He has no purification beads right away, but still plenty of damage for him. Look at that burst on the Davy. Neil right on top of him, though, and Neil able to get that kill without blinking an eye. Quick damage coming from the Circuit, but Zwen not deterred, pushing forward. He's got the cripple on top of three. Hydro. And Lake, the two hunters, try to support him, but just not a lot of damage coming from these two on the switch. They just weren't in range. They were behind Zwen just a little bit too far, so their auto attacks weren't actually connecting. Even Lake, with the Crystallized Curse's Vicious Barrage, one more time, just comes up short. Needs to be placing it a little bit further out. Cold Fury pulled by Cyclone. Zwen still here. The last breath is waiting for him. Toss right back into the rest of the team, but a great Crystallized Curses from Lake. Sets Hydro up to dash forward and do some extra damage. Airstrike aggressively, but not enough to find the kill quite yet. This sustain is becoming problematic already, but Gnome is going to join in now. He's going to stun Aribiax, but Aegis will stop that burst damage from happening. Aribiax still safe and sound. Can't say the same for Lake. He fell on the back. And Chronic the Bros still wants to keep chasing down Hydro and Zwen, but first Cyclone GG, they've got to deal with Gnome. Chronic the Bros will end up cleaning up the Ardeo on the backside, but Fatal Strike returns the favor all too quickly. Davey's going to be the first of all from Cyclone. Wow. Secondary followed up with Neil, and Reform Mango doesn't look like he has any intentions of slowing down. He's got another one ready. He uses it to close the gap. Aribiax all out of mana. Double stun is there. That's a triple for Mango. And Noxious able to turn it around off the back of their jungler. 
killing spree right off the bat. And with Hydro still alive, this could be an opportunity here for Noxious to look to pull this Gold Fury. Gnome still relatively healthy. Chronic the Bros, the only one that could arguably buy enough time for the rest of Cyclone to respawn and rotate back in here. But even then, Aggro, it's looking a little bit too unlikely as Hydro and Gnome already starting to make quick work of this Gold Fury. Down below half HP, Chronic decides to give it up. Noxious secure the first Gold Fury for them, second of the game and that really throws it back into their favor this game was really knotted up through the first 18 minutes but now noxious has the first real lead of the game and it it feels like that whole fight goes poorly exclusively because Aribiax runs out of mana i mean it was going so well for them before that hell stopped being able to use their skills it was a battle between who would run out of mana first it felt like because lake and hydro were also sitting very low in their mana bars too. It's just that ARPX a little bit more important. Now switch, looking to cause a forcible disengage of Noxious here, but Noxious is going to turn things right back around onto them. Hydro already eliminating Switch. Switch got the Earth and Fury off, but everyone from Noxious a little bit too healthy still. Pyromancer give it up now that they lost their support. Davy does get a tier one on the left hand side, but look at this Noxious. Decided to just pull fire and Mango tries to zone and loses his life very quickly because of it. Fire Giants down to about half and Noxious don't seem ready to drop it quite yet, but they're starting to take the fight while Fire is still dealing a ton of damage to them throughout. Chronic knocked up, brought down by Gnome. Neil comes in and finds a good Death Bane right onto Gnome and throws him in even more Fire Giant damage. That poison doesn't spread, but Fire is still so healthy. Cyclone able to force Noxious off the objective with ease, while Davy's able to split push and get two towers on the left. Zwen now looking to try and deal with Neil. Will force out the Circuit's Purification Beads, which is a, a pretty massive win for the rest of Noxious, but Noxious, I, I just can't understand why they wouldn't pull off the Fire Giant or at least tr all try to escape from that pit because they took so much unnecessary damage that when you combine that alongside of everything Cyclone were spamming on top of them, it's a wonder that Noxious didn't end up losing even more there. I'll, I'll bet you Fire Giant did at least 8,000 damage in that in that engagement. Like spread out throughout all of Noxious and Cyclone. I mean, it was it was leashed for a good 45 plus seconds. And you just can't, you, it, it'll never work when you take that much damage from the objective. Mango goes way too far forward to try and zone against two when he was half health. Uh, just a, a, a bad call from Noxious and it ends up costing them a lot. As I said, they had the first real lead of the game and they are still in the advantage, but not by as much quite now, even with both these tier one towers going down in mid and left. Noxious mostly just looking to get a return fire considering that Cyclone just took down their T1 in solo lane, rather forcibly too. Not a whole lot that Mego could do other than sit and watch here. I'm waiting though to see if Noxious are gonna try and go for another Fire Giant attempt anytime soon or if they're just gonna let things sit for a little bit longer here. I feel like the longer that Noxious go without actually pulling this Fire Giant, the better it is for Cyclone because it just gives their BX even more time to build up the necessary sustain on this hell. But it doesn't seem like Arabix is all that interested in playing healer for Cyclone so much as he is in doing the first damage. He's got plenty in the build, no doubt about it. No pen though, so he's not going to be dealing any damage to Zwen or Gnome. Healing 10k already coming from Arabix. That is, in layman's terms, a lot. Life of the Party brings Switch back in. He's knocked up and executed summarily by Mango. Hydro dashing forward alone. And now he's in a bad spot, does have the airstrike and needs to use it, just able to get out of dodge in time. Mango trying to follow suit because he's low on mana and HP. Great stun though from No. I'm gonna buy a little bit more time for Mango to create some space, but Neil looking to collapse now onto Lake, who's forced to try and ult away into darkness. Won't be able to go inside of anything, however, just comes up short, but he is able to juke out the Astral Barrage there from Davey. So Noxia is still being forced back. This is in a 4v5, remember. Noxious got a pick to start this, but it's the healing from Aribiax. It's too good until a triple stun from Zwen sets up the damage onto Davy. Davy does have the Aegis, but Neil does not. Has a Circuit movement, though, and that'll get him out of danger. Earlier it was Cyclone just barely missing kills, but now Noxious feeling that same pain. Aribiax coming in and detonating 
right on top of Hydro. That pull in from Gnome will be good as Kuya was able to find Davey off screen, but now Chronic is isolated, but Wukong Ultimate is right in time. These fights so back and forth. They're so chaotic, Aggro. Kuya now trying to deal with Chronic the Bro, spamming him on the front line. Aegis will be expended here, but Chronic the Bro is still looking to give chase. Mango now coming through again on the Achilles, looking for the three-man stun, and it will connect. And Cyclone and Noxious both don't suffer nearly as many casualties. I do, I do feel like Noxious probably should have ended up dropping even more Hunters there, but a couple of missed kills as well that managed to slip away off Cyclone's end. So Noxious are just struggling, I think, to find the last hits necessary to bring down the members of Cyclone. And when that happens, and the member from Cyclone escapes, then they heal right back up again to full because of Era BX, which just keeps these engagements extended for so long. These fights have been so long is right. And it doesn't seem like they're going to get any shorter because the Hunter damage is good, sure, but there's not going to be any more anti-heal coming for Noxious, unless, unless Gnome decides to go Divine, sixth item, which I don't know that he could really afford to do. He kind of took up his hybrid slot with that Gem of Isolation. Then this healing isn't getting any weaker from Cyclone, and that's, that's going to be a real problem. Possibly as the match progresses and Arabix is noted as more and more of a problem that we could see Gnome switching things up a little bit here and opting for a Divine Ruin in some part of his build. But for now, Noxia is kind of just relying on Zwen's upgraded Cursed Ankh to be the real boon of anti-heal that Noxious needs. It's just that if they can't finalize the last hits, it won't make much of a difference. Davy sneaks away a gold fury. Noxious had no idea what was going on, so instead they'll pull Pyromancer knowing that there was at least one member on the left side. Problem is that Lake was there as well. Lake has not had a, a great performance so far on the, on this Chernabog. He's still below Zwen's damage 25 minutes in. Just not enough Crystallized Curse, Vicious Barrage combinations. When they have come through, it's been significantly easy to win team fights for Noxious. And now's another chance for Lake to try and work his way up there in the player damage charge. Life of the party gonna bring in Kron to the bros, but he'll go up into the wow. Summer Club. And just a burst of damage. Davey is destroying off of that Deathbane from Neil. Neil's Cobra's kiss was just perfect in that little corridor. Noxious had no chance to stay up and healthy there. The dual lane gets eviscerated from Noxious. And now Cyclone will try their hand at the Fire Giant. Looks like they'll be able to get this one a little bit more easily than what Noxious tried just a few minutes ago. Even though Noxious have vision thanks to Gnome's Ward, it won't make any sort of a difference. Cyclone undeterred to pull this Fire Giant because they know that when you get two picks that quickly back to back as well, uh, there's just no chance that Noxious are going to want to continue engaging. No, he needs to be careful here. He does have his beads up, but Neil going to try and chase those away. In fact, it'll be Chronic stun that gets the job done in that regard. But Tier 2 Tower down easily for Cyclone GG, who have really taken control of this game. They're down in kills. The gold lead isn't there quite yet, though they do have one more tower they can get. That would equal another 1,500. Noxious is Phoenix defense is going to be critical here. But Cyclone are, it seems like they're really starting to hit their stride now into the late game aggro. And that's when Air BX is really meant to stand out most. Same could be said for Davey. Also, this Rom has really started to pick things up a little bit here. Even getting that last double kill, it could be such a massive swing of confidence there for Davey. He was struggling a little bit at the start of this match. Had some bright moments, but then also some lapses in judgment. and that kind of brought him back uh, to the, the same level as where Noxus were at with all that chaos. But now this is a real chance for Cyclone to look to turn things around. And with only one T2 standing in their way before a Phoenix Siege, Noxus can't be feeling all that safe but making a defense underneath it. Eribiax getting some pen in the build with the Obsidian Shard. Took him till five items deep, but does finally get it. And now he'll deal relevant damage to the Tex. Zwen and... No, I'm probably not too happy about that one. It will be a little bit of a, of a difference maker, I, I think, though, in some of these engagements because Zwen and Gnome have been rather difficult for Cyclone to try and bring down. Had it not been for, for Niels Cobra's kiss, in fact, in that last engagement, I don't even think that Zwen would have had any chance of falling. It's just that crowd control is all it really takes for Cyclone to appropriately burst the target. Zwen has done great work so far this game. Numerous 
two, three man stuns, and that is not easy to do on RDO. That is a very small radius that, that stun goes off, but Zwen has found himself right where he needs to be more often than he hasn't. It just feels like the draft really betrayed Noxious in this game. Uh, I think it was a good identification from Cyclone that Double Hunter has a real hard time anti-healing us. And, and going with the Hell pick, I think, was near perfect. Some real smart drafting going on, but not the smartest play from Nelmus. He'll get dropped in a heartbeat there from Davey. Now looking at still keep pushing forward, though. Cyclone and Zwen could be next wow. to Paul. Aribiax just did a quarter of the tank's health all in one burst. It's a triple kill for Davey. Aribiax will find number four. Mango, the only one left up for Noxious. But Cyclone GG take game one. Took him a little bit to get rolling. Okay. <laughs> Chronic the Bros was standing in front of Reform Mango inside of the fountain, spam laughing, and gets what he deserves. Mango still reminding Chronic the Bros, you might have won the game, but I'm at least going to bring you down with me. Now we can get the job done on the, on the Titan killing. That's a deicide for Cyclone, 29 minutes. They take care of Noxious, the hell selection. Really goes off. Davy as well, the game ending triple. By the way, that's your fail of the week for oh, yeah. Sports Week. Oh, yeah. No we, can, we can write that one down. I don't know if we'll have time to get it in for tomorrow, but for the next week potentially, then we could certainly get it. In fact, uh, production, make sure you, you get that one ready because that was certainly a fail there from Chronic the Bros. But not a fail for the team overall. I mean, these guys do a pretty good job. The double hunter composition, on the other hand, does not really work for Noxious. It started having a little bit of promise, I think, throughout the mid game. We saw, I think, that one team fight by the Gold Fury that Noxious get off a beautiful Crystallized Curses, Vicious Barrage, and you think for a moment here, this is Lake's chance to shine, but that was kind of the last time we saw the Turnabog in You're action. Right. After that, it just felt like it was mostly Hydro trying to make up for what felt like a lack of damage from Noxious as a whole, and it was just a little bit too much for a Jing Wei to handle. Jing Wei can struggle a little bit as is with dealing damage, especially yeah. against a healer composition, and without the necessary burst, it just fell apart for Noxious at the seams. Well, who was the MVP? Probably Aribiax. It's, it should be pretty easy because he did a ton of damage and a ton of healing and kind of did it all for his squad. Didn't see a lot of cleansing in order to get you out of CC, but there wasn't that much CC to really speak of on the side of Noxious that he had to immune because he could just push forward, deal the damage, heal up the damage that was really done. And indeed, it is Aribiax who is your MVP. Th this hell, I mean, when you can get to a point where Aribiax, I mean, only one spill 13 minutes in. Sign me up, dude. That That is that is an easy game to carry. The best defense is a good offense, and that was the mentality that Aribiax ran with the whole way through this match, and I can't blame him. When you go that unpressured in mid lane as a hell, you take every single abusable moment that you possibly can from that point forward.